Hi everyone, welcome to the channel for new battle report. So this time, this time a training round against Belgium and I had the pleasure to be paired against Guy. We both did the pairing so we ended up against each other so it was it was funny enough and more funny was the, the day of the game. Uh, I was actually, I went to a, a dinosaur park with my kids so it was the perfect preparation for for this uh, matchup and that's also why I picked uh, a picture of dinosaurs was a top preparation for me before the game so it was quite funny that it happened on the same day uh, let's move on so you know already my list uh, it's the, the list I've been playing the last couple of battle reports and then you have the list of uh, IH Dark Lord so basically a very MSU shooty Sorian Ancient list the points are well spread outside of the Archmage so we have an Archmage who is very powerful basically he can cast most of alchemy spell on two dice um very very strong caster then he has a unit of 30 take your warrior which is his only big block a small unit of 15 take your warrior two unit of skink hunter with javelin and then you can see below he has some more skinks two unit of uh skin gorilla vanguard two unit of skin gorilla chameleon so that's six total six unit of skin that are shooting poison so quite scary for big monsters uh, three Kaiman Elder, three l single Tyros Cutus with the Magnetic Great Bow uh, that are quite uh, yeah popular at the moment for Soren Ancient. And then two units of Raptor Pack and a Tegu Mystic unit will be the Mage Bunker. And the last unit is going to be a Pterodon Rider as Chaff. So as you can see, plenty, plenty of units in this list. Uh, we are playing Breaking Flags on the Frontline Clash. And below you have the spell selection. So as you can see, he has what personally I, I like a lot about Soren Ancient, which is very powerful magic phase where you have plenty of buff, plenty of range damage. And in addition to that, so that seven spell is as also the the power or the, I don't remember what's the, the, the correct name of the army book, basically can copy one of the spell that I cast it. So he has a total of eight spell, which is uh, really, really good. Matchup analysis. So it's an exotic list. Um, which makes it always hard to know exactly what to expect from the matchup uh, for all everybody in the team, including me. Uh, I rated it as an equal because I saw some advantage that I might have, where I couldn't, I didn't know exactly how to rate the danger of his poison shooting and magic. But definitely, alchemy shouldn't be the strongest against me, and uh, poison shooting, yeah, can do some damage on low armored stuff, but still. Um, a good half of my army is well armored, so that should be fine. Yeah, um, secondary wise, that's how I felt more comfortable. I have five scoring, he has three, meaning the, my main game plan will be to secure the breakthrough and protect my flags. And if I manage to do that, I should be winning the game. I will try to deny him his mobility by playing compact, and furthermore, I have no incentive to play wide actually because of the secondary objective. The Overlord and Incarnate has a weak flank protector, which is unusual for the Incarnate, I, I, I must say, because Incarnate, most of the time I play them strong flank. I felt they can maneuver more easily on the strong flank, but this time I need to protect my flag, so the first unit that he might touch shouldn't be a flag, actually. And the scoring will try to push forward, my magic will be my main weapon, I think is very sensitive to my magic, and to some extent also to my shooting. So basically I need to use that to my advantage and getting the first turn seems interesting here I think it denies him some special deployment advantage and also forces him to minimize to some extent my magic Okay, let's move on to deployment So that's uh, him who won the roll for side. He gave me the impossible in the middle of the map as you can see we have plenty of piece of train uh, I then elected to drop for first turn which uh, is a no-brainer for me in this configuration like I told you so I place all my scoring on the left you have here anointed Lugar, Vassal Levis, uh, Blunderbusses and then here the Bastion which I felt is the most resilient piece between all my scoring units so can be the most exposed and also I'm trying to get some magic somewhere so being uh, not too much to the flank is also important then I place the Incarnate like I told you can take advantage from the hill and be hidden and get some hard cover and then soft cover so I felt quite interesting, the fast cav, and then all the way to the right, the overlord that can, then has the flexibility either to go left or to go right. His counter deployment, he went with uh, scouting skink here and there, vanguarding skink, another skink, then skink and skink. <laughs> That's the sixth unit, the tyro, you can recognize them, the raptor are here. 
Here's one of his scoring units. The second one is the BSB here in the middle. Uh, here you have the Mage Bunker and here have the big block of uh, Saurus that are obviously Strider Water, so no, no issue going into the water. Uh, what I can point out, it's obviously this part of the map that I was trying to uh, to target with my scoring unit and obviously it's also part of the map where he didn't deploy anything because it's very hard to place in front of so many infantry blocks uh, some units so definitely some I expected him not to put a lot of stuff here on the left and that's definitely the zone where I'm going to try to, to be in with my scoring unit uh, that's going to be his target zone I felt between his three scoring units so that's something I could try to defend and then it's about the, the choice of the overlord, uh, which of the scoring unit I want to stop. Uh, meaning I could go right, that would be one game plan, and try to stall his advance and at some point get a charge into this unit and make sure that this unit doesn't go through. I'm not sure I got anything on the right that really scares the overlord enough to make me unable to take them out. So that could focus his attention. It's a decent game plan and the second game plan would be move towards the left, behind the impassable and then at some point support the incarnate and between these two units make sure that the Saurus cannot go into my breakthrough zone so I would say that's the, the two options that I have uh, let's move on to my turn 1, so I push all my scoring unit as fast forward as I could uh, I start to move the overlord, I elected to go towards the left, I felt uh, it will need so, so many units are out of the game for the moment they will need to push 2, 3, 4 turns before they reach anything significant so I felt let's keep them out of the game and basically have no shooting with them for at least two turns. So I felt that was interesting enough to do that. So I elected to move towards the left. Uh, Magic Phase got a Mark for Doom on his Tyros Cutus. Uh, but roll a 1 to wound. So that's unfortunate. Then Pentagram on two dice failed. Which I only need, a, I think it's a 4 plus. So I roll really, really low. Or 5 plus. I think it's 5 plus. But I roll like 2 and 1. Then he dispelled a burst weapon and I fail hereditary, so I got a very poor magic phase to, st magic phase to start with. Uh, let's move on to Eastern one. So he pushes all his units from the right towards the middle of the map, obviously. Try to close the gap. The rest pushes also forward and he prepares some of the Tyroscutis to get into shooting range. Uh, in magic phase he gets Molten Copper into my Infernal Warrior in the Bastion and managed to kill three of them, which is, uh, which is nice. It's, uh, it's okay according to the stats. I was expecting less, but actually it's, it's decent odds. Then I got Silver Spike uh, that did two wounds to the Bastion and also killed one of the Mario, the Wario. And then I made some uh, mistake of prioritization of dispelling. I dispelled the Mark for Doom on the Bastion because I felt, okay, uh, Mark for Doom, it's another potential three wounds. So then only three wounds left on the Bastion. Could be harsh. And then I let him have a minus one armor save on the Bastion, which is also dangerous because he got plenty of shooting and with all the shooting, uh, he's, going to, he's going to hit me on 5 plus with the two Tyroscutus. He hit me two times over four shots and killed another five. So actually, I lost like nine or ten guys, I think, in this, uh, in this magic and shooting phase, which is half of the unit, more or less. So, okay, quite scary. Then shooting-wise, he managed to do two wounds to the Incarnate with the small unit of Skink. My turn two. Um, so I continue to, to push forward. Here uh, I find a spot Yeah, I can charge, excuse me, I forgot to mention, here there was a unit of skin that was trying to bait me of the charge, I charged with the Lugar, I didn't flee far enough, I catch him and then reform looking to the flank, so I felt that's a, a good operation for me, I was also able to push the Bloodbus out of line of sight of those guys and be in range to shoot them, which is nice, and then I push forward with the scoring unit, the Bastion stays on the hill for the moment because like I said, I lost 9 guys, but I can still, I think, take another turn of or two before I needed to, to retreat. And the hill will be also, um, yeah, my alley to try to, to protect myself and retreat. Uh, I back here with the Overlord. So still completely ignoring all the units on the right. Uh, they are out of the game and they will need more time to, to come through me. There is this impossible protecting me. So I felt okay with that. And also these two units are zoning the, the scoring. So I have a good uh, density of threat here on this left flank. In the magic phase, I got um, breast weapon on two dice, fail, so again, not going well. Then I got grave call on the skink, and this time the magic turns on, and I one shot those kinks. So on two plus, kill all of them. A pentagram also go through and kill three skinks here. He passes the panic check, non rollable and then he dispels the mark for doom with his four dice against my three dice. Shooting, I kill 
Four Soros with the Blunderbuss, which is nice. It's a good start. Uh, he's turn two. So he starts to form also a solid battle line by pushing more the unit from the right flank. And here he's not going to push more towards me because I have too much combat threat. Uh, uses uh, another skink unit to chaff me. So I'm continuing to, to eat those kings, which is, which is nice. Uh, he needs to feed me because uh, otherwise I might have some charge range. And he plays his, um, yeah, his magic in range and everything. Magic phase. I took out the silver spike on the bastion. Uh, molten copper kill one, kill one warrior this time. I have only a four armor save. Uh, I dispel the eel and then he got a grave call on the small warrior unit and managed to kill five of them, which is quite strong. I mean, wounding on three plus. And then I have a six up, but still killing five, so not bad at all. The Tyro Scutus shoot onto the bastion and he killed another seven of them. Uh, okay, good, good result. So I'm really depleted. I have like, I don't know, seven guys left at the turn two. Uh, I expected him to do some wounds. I already played against the Tyro Scutus, but I didn't expect so much. I mean, like 16, three plus uh, warriors, or so that went to a four plus, obviously not the same. But still, uh, that's that's quite a lot, so I didn't expect that. Uh, let's move on. My turn three. So I elected to to try something. Um, I felt I saw an opening here that could be interesting for me. And since it was a training game, I felt if I won't try it now, I will never try it, <laughs> actually. So I pushed the Overlord into the gap here. And basically, only one of those two units can charge me. Not both can uh, close the door. So I felt that's totally fine. I have a line of sight. This BSB unit will not be able to escape line of sight. Uh, might have a good charge afterwards. And he will need to, to shoot me. And I'm not sure he's able to one-shot me. So then I might have opportunities also on the slant. So I felt uh, it's a decent enough move to be considered. At least I wanted to try it. I charge the skink. He stays. Uh, reform those guys. They push and then reform the rest. Those guys move also slightly on the hill and then I place my fast calf in the back to just zone in case he would flee over, I could charge him with the fast calf. Okay, let's move on to magic phase. I failed the mark for them on three dice. Then I got uh, hereditary on the Cayman Elder was dispelled. Pentagram, I kill uh, three or three raptors. And then, so yeah, I got nothing for magic actually. And then blunt, yeah, pentagram only, so which is not, not that great and blunderbuss. Uh, I had didn't have a lot in uh, that that were in range, but I was still able with those guys to shoot at the Tyro and do two wounds, which was a really pleasant surprise. Close combat, I kill the Skink all except one. He flees, I restrain, and that's it. He's turn three, and now is the time to readjust to my aggression. So basically, he turns around with everything and prepares a nasty magic and shooting phase, and he needs to get rid of me because if he doesn't, I have some. Nice charges that I see. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see how that goes. Uh, he doesn't rally the little guy in the top that's going to be at some point fleeing off the board. He brings everything, as you can see. Poison Skink, uh, Magic, and the Tyro Scutus. I have a 2-up armor save, so I didn't feel so threatened. Uh, he brings the Pterodon also to, to, to push towards me and try to threaten me. Um, what I liked also about this move was the fact that it allows my Bastion to stay on the hill because I expect him to react to that, so not having more pressure on the Bastion, so saving one turn of range damage against the Bastion. That's also one thing that I liked about this move, but we'll see how that goes. In the magic phase, uh, I binding scroll the Silver Spike, he got Molten Copper that did a wound to my uh, Overlord, so it's a good start. And then between the shooting, so as you can see, Molten Copper, one wound, is totally average. Then the Tyro Scutus should do also one wound, is nothing crazy. And then he managed to do the remaining wounds with Chameleon. I don't remember who rolled higher, if he did two with the Tyro, one with the Chameleon, or zero with the Skink. But he managed to do exactly the four wounds, which is nice for him because he one-shot the Overlord. That had some good options. Uh, I checked afterwards just to see the positioning, but I could have charges those Tyro having a potential overrun into the slant. So I had good option, even with one wound left. Uh, I have a D3 wound weapons that could have been enough to go through two wounds of the Tyro. So I felt that was a risky move by, by my opponent that could have potentially, I think, at least uh, make sure that I cannot charge or have no overrun into, into the slant. That's maybe something that was uh, doable. But other than that, yeah, um, I was too optimistic, I felt, 
Obviously, it's not a big scandal if he also do one wound or zero. It's not a big scandal that he kills me. Uh, so yeah, I think here there are. It's dicey, uh, and since it's dicey, I think the move that I made was not the good one. Uh, let's move on. My turn four. So now I need to move. I realize that I need to move away with the Bastion because there is no distraction anymore. So I go behind the hill, I jump with the character into the other unit, uh, I charge with the fast cav onto the pterodon, he elected to flee because obviously I would overrun into the skinx, which is not nice, so he flees that charge. Um, I push here towards the top with those guys, so basically uh, continuing to prepare the breakthrough, those guys marching forward in magic phase. I got uh, mark for doom, three dies, fail again, so yeah, not that great magic phase. Uh, this game, breast weapon kill one of the Saurus in the big brick, but it doesn't matter really. And uh, I'm outside of shooting range, so yeah, until now not so great. Got a grave call that one shot unit of skink, which was nice, but other than that, nothing too significant actually. He's done for. I uh, apply some more pressure, prepare some chaff, some fleas. Again, here maybe a bold move from from him because those two blocks have a charge on 11 onto the flank of the Saurus. They could potentially flee, uh, end up here, rally on turn 5, maybe they can still break through, so maybe that was his plan. Uh, he has enough room here, I don't know, maybe I could flee that charge to make a double flee pass in case I charge, that could have been enough. Uh, maybe that was his plan, but yeah, bold move here. Uh, he prepares a lot of skin to, to shoot me and feed me some more, maybe he wants also to tempt me to charge, try to take advantage from that. He prepared the breakthrough and the unit of Pterodon uh, didn't rally, I think it was a 7 minimize, continued to flee. Magic phase, um, he got silver spike, kill 3 of the warriors in the big unit I would say. How was he able to target the Bastion? I don't remember, we will see. A molten copper did nothing uh, into the big warrior unit I guess. Uh, he killed some more in the big unit with the Tyro Scutus that couldn't see the Bastion. And he also managed to kill a full uh, Kadim incarnate with his uh, poison shooting. Yeah, he shoots at the other unit of Infernal Warrior. My turn 5, um, so I elected to charge the skink with the incarnate and then chaff those two units to avoid a counter charge. Uh, then I jump the character into the Lugas and I start to push with the other two units because I measured that on turn 6 I can get both into the deployment zone of my opponent. So I felt it's good enough and here I zone him basically with the Anointed and the Lugas. In the magic phase, I attempt to finish the Tyre Scutus, I cast Mark for Doom and my opponent uh, funnily let him through and tell me uh, I will expect that you will do only one wound and I managed to do only one wound. But then with the attribute of Pyromancy I managed to finish the Tyre Scutus. So it's finally time, uh, I mean <laughs> it, it's been a long time since I've got so, many, so few points. Uh, with occultism in the game, so it wasn't that great. Uh, but then it forces a lot of panic check, and as you can see, his BSB is all the way bottom to the map. And it's going to take, to take like uh, one, two, three, they were out, four, five, six panic check, and it's going to fail the one from the slan, the closest unit, ah, my small vassal cavalry. And on a roll of eight on two dice, it would be off the board with the slan. Luckily for him, he only roll a 6, so he will get a chance to rally. But yeah, that was close to be a disaster. Uh, my turn, uh, his turn 5, he rallied the slan, uh, pushes the skin to chaff me, charge my chaff. Those guys just turn around because I felt I might fail the, the march check and then not be able to escape, so I just want to move 6 forward. And then that's going to be a mid-long charge for them, and if they fail, they don't go into my breakthrough zone. So most likely will not charge me. Uh, those guys push in my back to shoot. Uh, yeah, he positioned himself to, to get some more shots. Uh, he rallied the Pterodon and this guy is dead. Magic phase. He got uh, Silver Spike onto my anointed, did nothing. Mark for Doom got Dispel. Minus one armor save got cast on the Bastion. Um, I think I should have let Mark for Doom through on the anointed and accepted the potential 9 rollable check. I think I have enough wound to to survive another round and let uh, and dispel the minus one armor save on the Bastion that is important. And with shooting he managed with the skin to kill four guys in the Bastion unit. Which yeah is uh, is quite a lot. I think it's between yeah it was only the, the skinks. So by, by dispelling the minus one armor save I could have saved more wounds. Okay. Uh, I flee with one guy of the chaff unit remaining, he pursue me and catch me to get closer to my deployment zone. 
My turn six, I just go into deployment zone with every unit that I have and I form a big wall to protect my units against his shooting and magic. Uh, the incarnate move out of the way in the magic phase. Got a breast weapon against the skink here. Uh, they are going to fail their check out of BSB in general and any good leadership and they flee. And that's it, he dispelled the grave call. Uh, his turn is going to move forward to try to shoot me one last turn and magic me and that's a flag here if you remember so if he gets that he can get a tie on a secondary objective which would be annoying I uh, could have done even better by doing just like that actually with the wall of Lugas uh, to just avoid any I don't know if it was possible but potentially just give him an impossible placement to be within 12 of the Bastion with the unit of skink I think it was potentially doable and then he has only one Tyro Scutus to finish me which is probably not enough um, yeah, Silver Spike got Dispel, Mark for Doom, the, uh, not Mark for Doom, Molten Copper against 5 up armor save, uh, Bastion did nothing, and then he kills 2 out of 3 and I'm alive with one guy, so okay, it was close margin, but I felt overall I lost too many in the first 2 turns, I made some mistakes in the Dispelling attempt, that's also why it didn't... Uh, went so well for me but with this unit of Bastion but uh, yeah I wasn't expecting that from them to, to melt so quickly against his magic and shooting. Ended up being a draw on points and then I win 13 due to the secondary objective which is breaking flags. Focus on secondary paid off, uh, it was a KG game as expected. Uh, should have tried to, to stop at least one breakthrough. I think the main mission of the Overlord is not to go into any kamikaze uh, plan, but just stick to the plan, what was originally either go to the right and then try to block the small units or come closer to the incarnate and stay with them until the very last moment. Turn one, so an ancient, yeah, I should have left. I think uh, let Mark for Doom instead of Corruption at least on turn 5. Um, I think turn 1 we can debate because I lost 2 wounds from the Silver Spike so maybe it's too much pressure but even if I lose the Bastion it's not that bad actually in this game. So I think Mark for Doom should have let and especially turn 5 I should have uh, dispel uh, Corruption of Thin instead of the Mark for Doom that went on the Troke Anointed. Turn 1 and 2 Sun so and yeah, I didn't expect to lose 17 Infernal Warrior of the Bastion unit in 2 turns. Uh, I mean, that was a big surprise for me. Uh, Overlord I talked about already. I think his turn 3, it's a risk. Uh, definitely a risk that he took that the Overlord could contact the Archmage. Obviously, it needs for me to go through the 2 wounds remaining Tyro Scutus and then make the Overrun into the slant. But still, I think he should have taken maybe potentially a bit more time to try to make it less risky. I felt by just uh, wheeling maybe the Tyro Scutus it was possible to, to to make it impossible or place the slant differently, I don't know. But I felt it was still a bit of a risk. Uh, turn 5, big amount of panic check. Uh, some without BSB and the Archmage, I mean we went, we went really really close from losing uh, like a thousand points between the unit, the Archmage and then uh, two turns of uh, magic. I mean that's huge, that's, that's a huge, that's like... Three, three wall points, so it would have been a 16, so I mean that's, that's, that's really huge. Then turn 6, yeah, I was close to lose a flag, I fell to some bad decision to, uh, at some point my opponent also overperforming early on, and then I was, in, I was in trouble. I could have also, I would have said without committing, I think the right play was not to commit the Overlord, keep him close to the Incarnate, and then at this point of time, so turn 3, turn around the Bastion, move away, one turn sooner. And I think with that play, I would have been safer. I think that would have been the right play. Anyway, uh, learned a couple of things here. It was interesting to play against his list. And thanks again, uh, Guy, for the battle. It was a pleasant one. And guys, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon on the channel. Bye.